the beginning of court was very very stressful we had a lot of parties involved we had my mom nathan's mom nathan me david marissa's mother i think that's it yeah six parties involved everyone had to get their own lawyers oh and the cps lawyer so that's seven lawyers we had to testify against for two months we had our kids taken away from May of 2019 to the beginning of July, like July 2nd. Just got them back in time for um, 4th of July. Yeah, um, it was a long time and it was very stressful. And I feel like as a mother, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. Um, I cleaned my house as much as possible, but there was nothing else left to clean. Then everything was so quiet and I was so upset because I was just used to hearing giggles in the background and hearing my kids voices and you know hugging me and watching movies with them and enjoying time together as a family it was all taken away and i couldn't sleep i had insomnia there uh kaiser was calling me on facetime telling me how upset he was and how he wanted to come home and then when kaiser would express himself nathan would cut me off again so, I mean, it was very hard dealing with everything we had to deal with, especially at the beginning of court. So, at the beginning of the CPS case, within the two, first two weeks, month, um, we had a judge named Judge Fairley. Judge Fairley was the judge who signed the order, the judgment order, on May 13th, 2019 to have my children taken away. He did not care I had a lawyer at the time. He still signed it. He signed the order based off of allegations saying David has a bad temper. So I don't even understand why I didn't get a chance to speak up myself before they just ripped my kids out of my home. That's insane. And my lawyer, like I said in the last episode, he requested to be there before the judgment was signed and they ignored his request. <laughs> People can be so mean sometimes. I'm just upset. Just sitting here reminiscing on memories and I have nothing to do. I mean, I shouldn't be doing laundry, but I'm not. It just feels so empty to just come in here. too clean for too long. myself you know I was just I was reading a bunch of comments online that were just mean I mean some people say oh I'm praying for you Janelle I'm praying for you and then some people are complete assholes and they're just like oh you miss your kids this is what this is what you deserve I don't deserve this I know what kind of mom I am, and I'm a damn good mom. I do everything every day for my kids. <laughs> but we knew for these kids we had to be strong. I made sure I wanted to give the judge a good impression so I would show up on time every day. Nathan would be late every day to court, and then everyone started making jokes about it towards the end of court, like, oh yeah, he's late, you're, you're on, or he always is late. Like, I mean, it was ridiculous because no one even took it seriously but me and David. Like, it was a big joke to everybody. And then the public was freaking the fuck out. The public was just insane. They would not let anything go. They would call CPS every day for updates. CPS would give them updates to random people that didn't even live in my state. 
which is North Carolina. Every time Susan went to testify, she would say, it's a crying shame what these kids, the situation they're in. It's a crying shame if they would go home. It's a crying shame how upset these kids are. A source told the tabloids it would be a crying shame if the kids went back to their house. So we all so we were all um, subpoenaed to court, and I went to court, and it was um, well, first of all it was just a long day. We all got assigned attorneys, and a court appointed attorneys, and then um, everybody just talked and presented their cases. Then uh, we were like let off for the weekend, and we returned on the Monday. And uh, then when we were at court, it was just asking us all questions. And they told me that I had to hire an attorney because I made too much money. So I had to pay $11,000 for an attorney who asked like five questions in almost two weeks of court. And Jay shouldn't even have been involved in any of this because Jace lives with me and we live in Brunswick County and this case was taken in uh, Janelle's County is Columbus County so Jace shouldn't even have been involved in any of this so they made me sp I had to hire an attorney and spend all this money f for like five questions and for nothing for nothing well I think that you know this whole thing with CPS was so strange you know, I get a call before Mother's Day, uh, you know, that not to send um, Jace to Janelle's house for Mother's Day to their home. And then I guess it was like by Tuesday of the following, on the next week, the following week. So it was around Tuesday or Wednesday, I got called and said that I had to pick up Ensley at um, the CPS office in Whiteville, North Carolina, and I had to keep her. And they really didn't explain anything that was going on. I mean, you know, they, they took the kids away. Um, they took Ensley away, gave her to me. They took Kaiser away, gave her to um, the other uh, paternal grandmother. And we really had no reasoning behind this. And they said, you know, there was no drugs found. There was no alcohol found. There was no, nothing was found, nothing. They weren't, you know, there was no domestic violence. There was nothing. You know, the only thing they had on them was David has a, you know, an anger issue. But I mean, there was, the kids weren't hurt. The kids didn't have bruises. It was so strange. And they, and it was, you know, a very stressful time for us all. You know, I had Jace, I had Ensley, you know, Ensley, I had to get up early in the morning so I could drop her off at daycare, a, a daycare, I had to find a daycare for her to go, and um, then I had to drop her off at daycare, I had to bring Jace to school, uh, it, because, and then after bringing Jace to school, I had to drive an hour to court, then I'd have to leave court early to pick up all the kids before six, it was insane. And it was all for nothing. All for nothing. Nothing. But, you know, they just asked me questions if I had any concerns. And I said, you know, I really didn't have any concerns. And they talked to Jace. And Jace, you know, just told them that the only thing that bothers him is David's um, anger issues. But the kids were never, you know, touched. I mean, J Jace never told me that David... Uh, hit him or anything and so it's just very it's just like all a big waste of time heartbreak hurt a lot of tears I mean it was it's sickening sickening I think it was very wrong for CPS to come in and take the children away I mean my god they called um you know they called me up I had to go get Ensley I mean, I live, for, you know, 40 minutes away. Um, Kaiser had to go with his other grandmother. She lives like an hour and a, hour, an hour and a half away. They were just ripped out of the daycare with no explanation. They just said, come get them. 
were like, oh, what is going on? It's like crazy. And there was, you know, people, you know, some people are like, you know, drug addicts. Some people are like, you know, don't take care of the kids because they're, you know, into alcohol. I mean, there could be domestic violence where they're killing each other in the house. None of this was found. It just came and got them because people, most of the uh, problems I think that were occurred was from uh, fans. <laughs> fans of our show we used to be on with MTV that call CPS making up these allegations and they just came and took the kids without even investigating anything. It's I've never heard anything like it. It's, it was just wrong. When we went to court, uh, you know, that was the first time I ever met Marissa's mother and she's just very quiet. She didn't really talk. She doesn't talk. She would just nod her head. That was all she would do. And it was strange because she's pregnant and she still had no emotion. So, uh, you know, I talked to um, Marissa's grandmother, Mary, and, you know, she was very nice. You know, she, we were just kind of um, cordial to each other. We really didn't have much. She didn't really have much to say. She just, she just said that... Um, Marissa was shaken up and Marissa didn't want to come back and I don't know we know I to this day I don't know why Marissa was ever so shaken up I don't know I don't know if it was just the trauma of it all taken out of the house not getting explained to their lives were disrupted I don't know we would be put in these side rooms and you know CPS um, never really ask me many questions or anything they just kind of like you know I talked to them about what would happen in court um they wanted to put Jace on the stand and I said absolutely they had in fact the kids were all subpoenaed to court and um you know I at that time I told them uh you know Ensley's not coming and finally I put my foot down about Jace coming to court and I told CPS, I said, I am not putting Jace on the stand because there's nothing to be said and I'm not going to put him on the stand to be, you know, get all shook up about everything and get nervous about it. I said, he doesn't have to be. He should be in school. Marissa went on the stand. They, like I said, CPS wanted all the kids to go on the stand. <clears throat> so they were trying to put Marissa on the stand to get, build some kind of case, I guess, against them. And so they asked Marissa questions and she answered them, but she got, you know, she was very nervous and she was very um, emotional and she cried and because uh, she didn't want to answer questions for them that they were pushing on her. So uh, she was so shook up and it was heartbreaking that they would push all these questions on this young girl that she couldn't handle it and she got up from the the stand and she left the courtroom outside the courtroom in the hallway so you know I was sitting with Nathan cuz I yeah I used to not like Nathan but as the years go by you know I find I just friendly with him I think he's kind of comical in a way cuz he's so out there sometimes so you know he's talking to me and then he's telling me he said oh look he said you know I, I still love Janelle I'll always love Janelle she's you know she's the mother of my child and then he's even showing me pictures in his wallet no his phone I guess it was his phone <clears throat> excuse me that um, a picture of Janelle, my God, when they're dating, and she was like, oh my gosh, she was only so young at that time. I guess how old she was, I don't know, like 19 maybe? And she was all buffed out, you know. This is when Nathan met her, and he used to make her do weight training and everything. And I said, you still got that picture of Janelle? And he said, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, he's so funny sometimes. <laughs> So, you know, and when Enzo came to my house, you know, uh, when I took her and she had to live with me and Jace for a couple of weeks, yeah, she just thought she, at first, just thought she was coming to a, for a visit. 
and then after that, you know, after about three days, maybe four days, you know, she got really sad. She kept saying, you know, Meme, I want to go home. Meme, I want to go home. I miss Mommy. I miss Mommy. I want to see Daddy. I want to go home. And, it, you know, I would just tell them that. I'd say to her, I'd say, you know, and it's like, they just went away. They were, you know, they're working. You know, CPS told me um, when I had Ensley, you know, and naturally I always have Jace, to make sure that I don't talk to Janelle at all to block her number. And now I feel lost. I don't know what to do with myself. Nothing makes me happy. You know, I was reading a bunch of comments that said, Hope you never get your kids back. You're choosing your you're choosing a man over your kids. Um, we're a married couple. We have been for two years. No one knows my side of the story. No one knows anything. And it sucks to hold everything in. And you can't share anything because there's a case going on. And everyone's calling you a bad parent on the media. I'm not just a normal person. It just keeps happening. <laughs> this morning I woke up and my sister, there's a big, big headline that said, Janelle's family member says she'll never regain custody. And I'm like, who would say that? And then my anxiety immediately shoots up. So then I go and I click on the article, of course, and it said that my sister was like, oh, she will never regain custody of her kids. Well, let me tell you, I don't talk to my sister. I haven't for years. She's literally psycho, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. She's been in and out of mental institutions all her life. She has a disease called trichotillomania, um, which is when you pull out your hair when you get stressed out. That's why she wears wigs all the time. Um, she's been diagnosed as bipolar, but now she claims that she's not bipolar. She doesn't mean need medication and she's fine. And, um, for all these reasons, I mean, she's sold me out over the years. She's always hated me. She's always been jealous of my life ever since I've made the cheerleading squad in middle school. And, um, ever since then I succeeded in life and she didn't. She dropped out of high school. I graduated early. I completed high school. Um, she does have her CNA license, but she's claiming that she has a pre-law degree and a bachelor's degree in English and all this crazy stuff that is not true. If she went to college for that long, that means she went to college for like 10 years and that is not true. My sister does this a lot and in the past she's posted on Facebook that she's a cake maker and she took all these professional pictures from Google and posted it to her Facebook and said, if anyone needs me to make a cake for you, I will. So if you talk to my sister, she's done everything that you can possibly imagine in life, supposedly. She has a career in everything. <laughs> but um, <laughs> other than that, I mean, you know, I just, I posted about it and I said, my sister's psycho, don't believe her. And I'm getting a you know, some responses saying, oh, well, you're just a psycho if you're posting about her and this and that. And it's just hard to deal with this when it's like your blood relative. And what did I do to her to deserve why she's talking shit? I don't understand. She's done this for years. But I think everyone realizes that without me saying anything. So I just need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> so the whole time that they had our kids away from us, it was super depressing. But afterwards, soon afterwards, we realized that this situation brought me and Janelle together like a rock. So much more than we were before. We were constantly talking to each other, trying to figure out what we're gonna do next, where we're gonna go next, what we're gonna do in life, what's, how's the future gonna go from there? And, you know, I think we, we helped each other to get through it. 
it was very, very stressful. And then we cried a lot. We cried together. We cried in the shower. We cried in the car. We cried in the bed. You know, we we hardly had a moment where we were happy the whole time the kids were gone. It's basically the only thing we thought about or talked about. And <laughs> my mind was racing every day about what I'm going to say in court or what they're going to say about me or um, how my kids are sleeping or <laughs> what they're eating or are they having fun or are they sad because they're not with me like I mean my kids love me to death I I do everything for them I do everything with them so when I'm not with them it just doesn't make sense and it definitely doesn't make sense for anybody else to have custody of my kids and it doesn't make sense for us to not be able to see them and then when they did let us when CPS actually did let us visit with the kids at the CPS office then Marissa act all shy shut down she didn't want to talk and I realized after the first two visits that these ladies are telling her you just you don't have to talk to him don't if you don't talk to him then everything will be okay and if you want to just leave you can leave if it if he's gonna make you upset then don't talk and you know you can't tell a kid stuff like that they need to be able to get their actual feelings out without someone trying to persuade them or ask them certain questions to get a certain answer. You know, you can go fishing for answers and get them sometimes, especially with children. They just want to make you happy. They want to make the person who's asking them questions satisfied with the answer. I'm about to take you into Marissa's room and show, show you around. Show you what kind of, con I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what kind of condition the kids' rooms have been in since they've been taken out of the house. Not since I clean. Just since they've been taken out of the house. So this is Marissa's room. As you can see, I have done a bunch of laundry since she hasn't been here. And um, this is what her room looks like. Um, I think it's pretty sweet for a preteen room. She won for, um, she was a weekly sportsmanship winner for I-9 Sports. This is when she did her cheerleading. This was a Father's Day, or no, this was, um, what was, oh, Valentine's Day for her school. And David, they asked the parents to secretly write a note and make something and hand it into the school, and that's what David did. That was back in 2017. <sighs> I guess that's all the things that she wanted from Walmart. As you can see, her room only looks messy because she has clothes to put away. That's her chore. There's her cheerleading. Her cheerleading um, picture. She got this from school. Fantastic Friend Award. 2018. As you can see, she has pictures of her dad and her everywhere all over the place and yep so that's marissa's room <laughs> maybe you can come in my house this is the boys room this is when they share this room you got full size on the bottom and twin on the top but i'm about to get rid of this bunk bed because you see how big it is and it gives them just a little bit of room to play so i got a smaller bunk bed that's like pipe and we're gonna set that up take this down but it's a lot of work so we haven't done it yet <sighs> but they're good for now nothing's wrong with this bud so you can see they're spoiled spoiled boys <laughs> she acted like she was just she didn't act like she was upset she acted like she was just completely shut down 
Like, they almost convinced her to not even talk. But, you know, the rest of the kids were, you know, playing and having fun. But if, if I walked up to Inslee and said, you know, give me a hug or let me hold you. And she's like, no, I want to play with my toy. Then Susan would literally look at us and smirk and laugh and be like, ha and write something down on her paper. Like, she's just trying to, just trying to push buttons. Just trying to make us feel like we're bad parents. I mean, that's like some emotional abuse. Hey, I don't know what she's been through in her life to get her where she's at now. And I'm not sure how she got the job she has with the mentality, her mental instabilities. I just, I don't understand how people are able to get those types of jobs. Like there needs to be a, a proper vetting before you can be a, a social worker that takes away people's children. Especially not someone who goes to jail for random things and Anyways, she didn't like me to begin with. Hey you guys. So it's a beautiful morning out. You can tell that my eyes are a little puffy. Last night I cried a lot. Um, it's been about, I would say four weeks since the kids have been gone. David went to sleep early. And I just, I was really sad. It's really hard being here at home with none of the kids here. I look crazy. Sorry, I literally like just woke up and came out. Those are frogs here in the background. It rained a lot last night. So there's puddles everywhere. But yeah, it's just, you know, I just feel like I'm being punished for no reason. It's really hard to deal with, and now my eyes look like I'm sick or I got an allergy or something. Maybe I do. I don't know. David just cut the grass yesterday. David's over there trying to get the pigs again. <laughs> they got out again. Story of my life. <laughs> pigs getting out. I'm trying to take it day by day, and trying to be sane and not trying to lose my mind right now it's so easy to just say fuck it and run away or you know just like, go get my kids when no one's looking I can't do that <laughs> um I mean it's so natural for me to just take care of my kids every day all the time and I can't do that so I've been sitting here taking care of these guys and my chickens <sighs> still got babies to take care of even though they try to take mine away but that's life I guess living and learn fortunately <sighs> it's like just so empty like look Oh, wait, sorry. We've got the trampoline, the playground, the zip line. No kids. I'm doing what I have to do to get him back. You know, we're doing parenting classes. David, David's doing anger management. We're trying everything. I've taken a domestic violence course. We have substance, substance assessment. Ah, so much. But, you know, we'll just see what the judge has to say. But we knew for these kids we had to be strong. We were the only ones they had. This was their home. This is what they should come back to. And this is what they deserve. We knew we had a big mountain to climb in front of us, but we still did it. We had to buckle down every day and do it.